Today we will install a dropout spice rack uh, 8002R right facing. This is the easy install use it unit and we call it right facing. When you're using it, it'll be to your left, but the spice rack is facing to the right direction. Now I've already pre-installed the first cabinet and pre-drilled the holes in it so it's ready to put screws in. In this particular case, I'm going to be using a half inch finished bottom. So I'm going to put a half inch filler on top of my uh, temporary ledger here to hold it in place. And then all I need to do is set the entire unit up on top of it. Make sure everything is flush and flat in place. Now you need to put at least six screws on this side because this is the side carrying all the weight. Uh, I like to do seven. I uh, put uh, four in the front and three in the back, making sure these front two panels stay nice and tight to each other. We're ready to put the next cabinet up to the right side. That one, I've also pre-drilled the holes, so all I need to do is pick it up and put it in place. Okay, now we have this cabinet installed in place, and all we have to do is fasten the two together. We want to be sure that this is lined up in the front, keeping our front face flush. And we also want to check and make sure that we're maintaining our four inches of space in between. If it gets, cabinets are, are skewed and it squishes it in, that's going to throw things out of whack, or if it's even pulled out too wide, so be sure that they're parallel. Now all we have to do is put the screws in this side. In this side, you can use as few as four screws, just holding the four corners together. Again, I find just using all seven is nice. Now at this point, the unit is fully installed. And all we need to do is remove the ledger from underneath. to get your other doors on your other cabinets all finished first so you can line up the adjustment for where you want these uh, and then you'll be able to uh, remove these put the door on and we'll get it set exactly where it needs to be and then it'll be time to uh, finish it up. Now we have our, our doors all mounted and we're ready to put the door on the dropout. So at this point you can open it up. As you can see I've already removed all the packing materials. It's ready to go. All we need to do is take the front blocks off, which are taking the place of where the door is going to go. At this point, we still leave the bottom block on it because that's keeping everything in place for our adjustment for the door. So, removing the door uh, blocks, the number one square drive is the driver bit, and on this back side where the guide bar is, bar is here, this hole is a little bit difficult to reach normally. It's a lot easier with the Stewalt 90 degree angle adapter and just get right into that and remove that screw and then you can use the straight drivers for the rest. Be sure and 
save these screws because you'll use them to put the door back on. Now you can see when the door, the dropout is closed without a door on it, the bottom block is stopping it in its proper location. These have all been preset in the factory to the distance they should be, but should you need to do some adjusting of your door amount, there's a set screw in the bottom. You can adjust them with a coin from the back side, tighten it back up when you get it adjusted where you want it. At this point now, we're ready to measure for uh, the locations of where the screw holes will need to go into the back of the door. You want to pre-drill those and uh, set to get them set. So you start with measuring from your existing surfaces to the centers of these holes. This particular one is four inches. That's nice. And then uh, measuring from your doors across, maintaining the eighth of an inch gap that you need between it. So you'll have that measurement minus an eighth of an inch. Transfer all that, both top and bottom, to the back of your uh, door panel for this unit. Be sure that your handle is already mounted on that because you can't get in to put the handle on it later. And then be able to transfer that right up here and that will install that door. Okay, now you have your pilot holes drilled in the back of your door. You can line it up to the screws. It's easier to start a screw part way in to begin with. Square drive. Now you have your bumper pads on the back of your door, so those are going to take up the distance exactly as it was in the setup. And then when you close the door, the panel lines up. Now at this point you can remove that block from underneath, because now the door is what holds the limiting motion. you're not putting a finished bottom on, you're finished. The whole unit operates on its own. Put the door on it, it should have about the right lift to stop just about anywhere. And as you add weight, then you'll adjust the uh, load adjuster on the back side. Now to put the finished bottom on, we're ready now to add that. Okay, now we're ready to put our finished bottom on. It's going to fit right in here. I already made this part up here. We want to make sure that we maintain an eighth of an inch gap on both sides. So it's going to be attached to the bottom of the spice rack here. So when you move the spice rack, it comes with it. And it comes right back up into that slot. Now we're going to put some construction adhesive where it's going to come right on here. And then we're going to put two pin nails just to hold it in place until the construction adhesive dries. Just let that dry like that, and then once it's done, that will be ready to go with the part. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you are going to have a backsplash underneath a space like this, you want to wait until after the backsplash is done to do this, because you will trim it back further so that it doesn't hit on top of the backsplash when you move the cabinet. As you can see here now, this moves just with this, go right back up into that spot. As you can see now, the cabinet portion of this project is complete. If you want to have a uh, finished crown or whatever you do with the ceiling treatment, just like there over any other door, you just go ahead and finish that off right on across, or finish like this if that's the way your project is being done. That's when you drop out the place, right?